so the one reason that Microsoratus is at the bottom of this list is because number one, it appeared in one film. Number two, it didn't really have any importance and it was just there to be there, obviously. And I actually almost forgot that this thing was in a film just entirely because no one remembers this, which is why it's at the bottom of this list. Honestly, the fact that I have to put these things on this list is what really just kills me. Because these things were an absolute abomination in Dominion. They were they were there. And that was it. They were like the entire plot. That is this these guys were literally the plot. And I and I was not there for that. Honestly, I feel like Guanadan should have gotten higher, but he really only got so much screen time in dominion but he hardly got any screen time at all and if he did get more screen time and he had more of an impact i would put him way higher on this list but yeah the, the reason he's so low is because he barely showed up at all these guys were really just also like the iguanodon i feel like they were there for like filler like filler content which is what so many of the new species in dominion were there for and uh what just makes the Demetrodon really stupid to me is that the first scene he got where his sail was going through the water was only there to get people excited for the Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus wasn't even there, by the way. Um, and they took my boy Alan Grant's hat, which is what really pissed me off as well. And by the way, all this footage you're seeing, Demetrodon is hardly in it. Like, this is bullshit. I have practically nothing to say about Corythosaurus. Because there is nothing to say about Corythosaurus. It was there, and it, it was there. That's literally it. Again, there's literally nothing to talk about. Because there's not much of this guy. There's literally nothing to argue about. Because no one remembers this dude. This dude, like, half of his screen time is because of the Giga. Half of his screen time is because of the Giga Notosaurus. Plus, this dude is more intimidating than the Giganotosaurus. Because at least this dude was able to catch a body. See? Smilodon is honestly a fever dream to talk about. Forgot this guy existed, because I have not watched this show in years. And honestly, I wish I forgot he existed. Because he sucked. Something I figured out while I was actually editing this was that Overaptor doesn't actually appear in the film. He appears in the extended version, in the extended version only. And no wonder, because he gets decapitated within his screen time. At this point, there are just so many dinosaurs in Dominion that just are there for no reason. Because, like, this, this scene you're looking at is a place where people are supposed to work. So why exactly... Is there a pyroraptor there? If this is a place where people are supposed to work, why is there a dinosaur here? Also, why can it swim? Pyroraptors can't swim. This is basic knowledge. This is like counting. Pyroraptors can't swim. It's like two plus two. It's that easy. It's that easy to understand. Also, why can it fly? Also, why is it here? We, we don't need this. We don't need this. And the only reason I put it this high up on the list is because it's a hybrid. That's literally it. We don't need this. We will never need another hybrid again. We already have enough. Another dinosaur that suffers from being inside of a terrible film. And uh, the only reason it's this high up is because it actually did have a pretty good purpose. With causing a plane crash. I honestly don't remember what Nothosaurus did. But what it did to this Brad. Which caused the Brad to shoot the generator later in that scene. I don't remember what it did. But it saved the season. It kept the season going. Because if they didn't stop whatever it was doing. Uh, the season would have ended at the end. Nah, 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 nah. I'm telling you. Dinosaurs that just appear in Dominion. Are just going to get absolutely useless they're useless to the movie i don't 
I don't even remember this. Yeah, he was in the film. <laughs> he was there. He was there. Uh, I don't even want to talk about him. Yeah. Uh, but this guy was just there. I'm going to say it again. This, he was just there, and that was it. But I put him higher because the few shots we did get of him, I thought were pretty majestic. And I actually really liked the shots with Dreadnoughtus. And I was like, oh, cool, okay. So that, that, that's why he's higher. Do not mess with the Lystrosaurus. It will absolutely rip your hand off if you try to go near it. They did my boy Pierce dirty in this show. That, that's all I have to say. Pachyrhinosaurus was one of those creatures where it was supposed to come in in an earlier film, but didn't. And uh, me personally, I'm a big Pachyrhinosaurus guy. And seeing this guy really set that mood for what you expect from a Jurassic series or film. Especially something that comes after Dominion. That garbage fire. This film act... No, no, no. This series actually did... Dinosaurs in Our World, right. The Morphodon actually had a pretty well reputation in this franchise. And the biggest example of this is Claire u using one as target practice. Sukumimus is another one of those dinosaurs that was finally did justice in Chaos Theory, like the Pachyrhinosaur. It was a creature that was originally supposed to appear in stuff like Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom. And Dominion, but had gotten pushed back and just, like, cut out. So, I'm actually really happy that it finally got featured in something. Which is why, to me, it is so high on this list. This dude has been forgotten for so long. But he still has a reputation in this franchise like no other. Because Pachycephalosaurus is just different. Well, literally. This dude can smash through fucking cars i was gonna put sinoceratops so much lower until i actually figured out this clip existed i completely forgot this was in the movie what the hell is he doing to chris pratt this dude got basically the same treatment as sinoceratops so i figured why not put him right next to sinoceratops so yeah that's it all right, yeah, I would put him higher, but there's a few th problems with that. Beckel Spinex can't swim. Also, it's not even Beckel Spinex. It's Alta Spinex. That's the actual name. Why Beckel Spinex? I have no clue. This dude deserved better. He was literally only used for a poop joke. Plus, like, Cam Cretaceous? Yeah, sure, that exists. But he gets bodied by a Scorpius immediately. The death of this guy in Jurassic World is what puts him up here. It, it's just, like, how Apatosaurus is able to give off such emotion as a big, giant lizard. What I feel like Hadrosaurs have had to do for a while is be looked at and be called, like, just easy prey. To bigger stuff like T-Rexes and stuff. But Oranosaurus finally changed that. And was able to make it look like Hadrosaurus could also be aggressive. Just as aggressive as other creatures. Like Allosaurus and stuff. And was able to put the picture on Hadrosaurus to look aggressive as well. And not just easy prey. Which is why it's up here. Honestly, I feel like these guys are really just like raptors. But bigger. Are these guys even bigger than raptors? Okay, I don't know. If they aren't, I take that, I'll take that back. But I want to say they are also extremely intelligent. But the thing is, they just don't get recognized enough as much as velociraptors. Because obviously those are velociraptors. Gallimimus are just really iconic. Like, if I showed you an image of just, like, a random ornithomimid, like Struthiomimus, you'd probably say Gallimimus because that's just how iconic they are because of this film. And I, I personally think they're pretty decent, and I think they're pretty just good in general. While I do think Atrociraptors were pretty good in Dominion, I, I really did not like them in Dominion because they just seemed really, really stupid to me. But in Chaos Theory, they seemed really, they, they seemed menacing, which is what they were going for in Dominion.
but it didn't work out for me. But in Chaos Theory, they really got that vibe of menacing off of them, which is what put them up here. If they didn't get that menacing from Chaos Theory, I would have put them way lower down. One of the only reasons that the Stiggy Moloch is this high up is because, really, with Adam, Fallen Kingdom would have ended because Claire and Owen would have been stuck in that little cage, probably would have been killed by uh, someone, and uh, bidding would have kept going, and a uh, movie would have ended. So with that Stiggy, no Jurassic World Dominion. Actually, no, I hate the Stiggy Moloch now. All right, these guys were literal terrors in Jurassic Park 2. And uh, in Camp Cretaceous, it was that their bites are actually venomous. So this guy got lucky that these guys were venomous. He really just got lucky. But that bald woman did it. Th these were just the herbivores in Jurassic Park. But it was just impossible to put them higher compared to all the other stuff, like, higher up on this list. Because it, it really can't just rank up against some of these guys. But, my God, it gets really, really close. This guy was absolutely determined to take someone's head off. In fact, it almost did. If you chose, like, the can ending. Okay, no, it did. Took plenty of heads off. Except the problem is, Darbosaurus isn't really canon. Because Camp Cretaceous Hidden Adventure is not canon. So that technically means Tarbosaurus doesn't even really exist. The Stegosaurs in the Lost World were really just majestic to me. And they were pretty, pretty giant. They were really a terror in the film. Because they attacked and they split a log right in half. Which just showed you how powerful their Thagomizer were. And just not to mess with them. Ankylosaurus had one of the most iconic scenes in Jurassic World. Which was his fight against the Indominus which is what you're seeing on screen right now. But especially since he got a character in Camp Cretaceous, Bumpy, he his popularity, like, spiked, which is why he's up on this list, this high. Everybody knows about Triceratops. It is just so iconic. And when you remember this scene of the, uh, the sick one in Jurassic Park, it's just like, oh, yeah, that's the Triceratops. Like, everyone knows it. Everyone loves it. And everyone just... Everyone loves it. That's all I got. To, that's all I have to say. Okay, so it was kind of hard to pick between a few of these guys, but I think Baryonyx goes lower, specifically because of some inaccuracies that the Baryonyx has in this scene. Like, watch, this dude is lava proof. How is this dude lava proof? But something that also keeps him up higher is um, the trio in Camp Cretaceous, because I really like that trio. Carnotaurus was. Probably pretty intimidating in Camp Cretaceous as Toro. But he was also just intimidating in general in like Fallen Kingdom and Dominion. I actually didn't have a problem with him in Dominion. But I had a pretty big problem with him in uh, Fallen Kingdom. He had three easy prey items right there and he chose to fight his Sinoceratops. Like what the hell are you doing? His scene in uh, Jurassic Park was like genuinely like terrifying but honestly what it makes up for it in Jurassic Park it really sucks for in uh, Jurassic World Dominion because it was so stiff so creaky and got one shot by Owen Grady it just it, it sucked in that film, which is why it's not up any higher. This guy was a menace in battle at Big Rock. And it really made Allosaurus feel terrifying. But so did Chaos Theory. It, they both captured perfectly to me. How Allosaurus, even though it is way, way smaller. Something like a T-Rex. Bigger doesn't mean scarier. Smaller things can be better too. Jurassic Park 3 may have sucked. But this scene was one of the best scenes in the entire film. It was it was scary, and it really made you think that someone was going to die. And uh, it, it really made you think Billy died. But guess what? He survived. Don't know how. Don't know why. We didn't really need him. But these guys made it look scary as shit. Like, look at this. That dude's creepy.
It is impossible to not include Brachiosaurus up this high. One, because it's so goddamn iconic. Two, because it's so goddamn iconic. And three, it is the only dinosaur in this franchise to actually make me shed a tear. And that was when it died in Fallen Kingdom. Plus, this scene in Jurassic Park was just too good to not mention. So much for being like a goddamn joker. Uh, Giganotosaurus was a badass design, I gotta say that. It's part of what it puts it up here. The fact that it was also just able to take out a T-Rex just like that shows you how powerful it really was. But the thing is that, like, I would put it higher if it was actually a villain. Because it's not a villain. It was literally just there. And honestly, I don't know why they tried making it a villain. Because it, like I said, it wasn't a villain. But still, it's huge. And it's scary. And it's badass. This is why I put it up here. One part on why Theris and the source is up this high is because it actually gave you a reason to why it did not just kill Claire. It's blind. Which is also what made it more terrifying. Because even though it was blind, it still managed to find the exact location on where Claire was. It knew exactly where she was, which is what made it really terrifying because it still found her, even though it's literally blind. Like, bruh. This thing can give people thalassophobia, like literally. With that final scene in Fallen Kingdom where it was in the wave about to eat a surfer, no, that could literally give someone thalassophobia. It's the only thing to kill the Indominus. The Indominus literally almost took out an entire island. It could take it out an entire island if it wanted to. The only thing to stop it was the Mosasaurus. These guys are the definitions of just creation gone wrong. They are small, they are fast, they have sharp teeth, and they are murderous. Specifically the ones in the Jurassic Park films. Not the ones in the Jurassic World films. The ones in the Jurassic Park films, though, are something else. Okay, listen. I know this dude built the entire franchise. But, remember, this is based on opinion. None of this is factual. This is based on opinion. And, uh, yes, I do agree that the Tyrannosaurus basically built the franchise, but I really think they did the Tyrannosaurus just terrible in the newer films. Which is why I think, even though it's been there since the beginning, it probably should have stayed in the beginning. This thing was designed to be a weapon of war, literally. It was used to be in the military, or it would have been if it didn't go rampaged. But it was literally the Indominus, but smaller, faster. But that's also its downfall. It was smaller, which is why it was just able to be killed by a Velociraptor rather than ganged on by a T-Rex, Velociraptor, and a Mosasaurus, unlike Indominus. The amount of aggression the Spinosaurus had, all because this plane hit its sail, and it took that very personally. So it went after literally anybody and everybody on that plane, until it was stopped by a fire. Yeah, basically the same thing as the Indoraptor, except add poison to the mix, and every dinosaur on that island is dead. Every single one. Plus, there's two of them. And, yes, they are way more durable. Did I mention there's two of them? It is almost impossible to have not put the Indominus on first place. Because it is huge, it is strong, it has long-ass limbs, and most importantly, it can camouflage. It, it, I don't think you understand how OP camouflage is. Plus, this thing can speak... With raptors. Like I said, raptors are already a pain in the ass. So imagine getting ganged on by an Indominus and raptors. Plus, did I forget to mention? An entire ACU team could not even stop this thing. An entire Ankylosaurus, T-Rex, Velociraptor, and Mosasaurus. It took all of that to stop this thing. Like, that's just how powerful the Indominus was.